Jung was always fascinated by the idea that in the psyche, the archetypal self uh, was, was a crystalline structure. He had a sense and an intuition that, that within the psyche, there's a diamond, what you may have heard talked about as the diamond body. And uh, if you look at his uh, collected works, uh, volume 9 too, you will see Jung's reflections about some ancient uh, images of, uh, of what he believed contained uh, co some, some suggestions, intimations, insights into the structure of the self. And so the, the title of this essay in volume 9 is The Structure and Dynamics of the Self. So now, the reason I'm sharing this with you tonight is because Jung uh, was very fascinated with the, especially earlier in his work, with the, with the, uh, the idea that you can study the collective unconscious. This is another thing uh, that differentiates uh, Jung from... Uh, from uh, most contemporary uh, psychologists and psychological theories. The idea that there is a collective unconscious in the codes of the psyche. Uh, in any case, Carl Jung was fascinated. He realized from his studies, comparative studies of uh, world mythology, and I recommend that you look at the index to volume 20 of the collected works to see the enormity of the studies that he did uh, on, if you look at this, this, uh, if you look at this, uh, this quadration here, there's a, there's a square at the center here. There's a four-sidedness, there's four sides to this, uh, to this image. This is an octahedron. And, uh, so what we need to remember that, that Jung was convinced that in psychic geography there was a, there was a four square aspect to psychic geography. And he began his studies being fascinated by what he called the quaternio and the double quaternio, which is the eightfold uh, image, the fourfold and the eightfold. And I'm sure that, that what fascinated him so much about this is because, um, uh, is that this image contains both an, a geometrical representation of the fourfoldness. There are four sides to an octahedron if you, if you just um, uh, turn it in your hand, get a calcium fluorite crystal hold it, turn it in your hands, There's, it's, it's like a two pyramids base to base. But there are only four faces on an octahedron, four faces that, that extend from, from top to bottom. Uh, so there's, there is an eightfold, the double quaternio, and there's the fourfoldness, of the the four sides, of the four faces of an octahedron, and in that image, that single image, uh, Jung was intuiting something about this archetypal code of the structure and dynamics of the self. Now, if you look at this section in uh, in volume nine, uh, you and read this, Jung was trying to assign. Uh, Terms for the facets. What he was fast, he he was interested in. Okay, if this is the, if this is an image of the structure of the self, what are the facets? What are the sides? What do they represent? And what he was trying to do was to look in, uh, 
as Jung taught us to do, to look into mythic traditions to see uh, what they might have to tell us about the deep structures of the self. And so this was, a, this was a, from a particular uh, tradition, some of the Gnostic, uh, Gnostic uh, traditions, and he was trying to associate, he would take these terms, uh, Moses' carnal man, the lower Jethro, the negative Miriam, and so forth, and he was trying to assign the, 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 the sort of mythic images of different personalities and different qualities to the octahedron to try to get a sense of, of what they might mean by looking at the mythic uh, context. Now, after a while, Jung lost interest in this. He, he, he never gave up the idea that there was a kind of a crystalline code uh, uh, within the self, that the self, that there's a certain uh, structure in the collective unconscious. So, uh, uh, as you know, when he tired of this, he began to get more and more interested uh, in the uh, in in the fourfoldness of the psyche, and began to focus on uh, the uh, psychological typology. Uh, uh, in, intuition, thinking, sensation, and feeling. And he began to, to work a great deal with, uh, with, with psychological typology as the fourfoldness of the psyche, trying to look at the fourfoldness in typology that he came up with as a way of thinking about what is, what is the quadration of the psyche about. Now, his protege and um, lover, uh, Tony Wolf, uh, had another idea about what the fourfold uh, quadration of the psyche is. And um, she published this article. Uh, in the Students' Association uh, publication of the Jung Institute called The Structural Forms of the Feminine Psyche. Uh, and she began to say, and this anticipated some of my later work, uh, uh, I realized that Tony Wolfe is one of my, uh, my forerunners in Jungian psychology, and I, I can if I trace my heritage back to her in a sense, in that she began to look at there being structural forms other than typology, other than psychological typology. And she was focusing on the female psyche, saying that there is an underlying structure in the female psyche. Now what we'll see 